a lot of viewers, thank you for staying tuned. Now, cannoli. Cannoli, I guess you can find them all over all regions of Italy, correct, Yes, Franca? of course. Very popular sweet all over Italy, yes. Uh, of course, they had their origins in Sicily. And we have to really remember that with the Arabs back in the 9th century bringing uh, sugar cane back uh, to Sicily, um, that's when a lot of the, uh, I guess, desserts had it, their birthplace, really, in a way. Um, and uh, th the thing is about cannoli that it was always done with ricotta. And ricotta, of course, in the springtime when you had, it was, it was always made usually with sheep's milk. Did you know that? Mm, no, so just if, they, if they're using cow's milk, it's just a milder cheese. It's not as sharp. Um, now, tell me, what did you uh, put in your cannoli? Mm. I put in very fresh ricotta, that's mm -hmm. important. Yes. Uh, lemon zest, yes. sugar, and limoncella crema. Mm. Okay, mm. Yeah, And then I topped it with crushed pistachios mm. and dusted it with icing sugar. And the important thing that we have to remember is that with cannoli, because it is um, made in it's a very thin pastry, which is, of course, fried, um, Canola coming from the word canna, meaning reed like. Um, in the old days, they used to use bamboo, but yeah. you, of course, use um, a stainless steel a conical shape. Conical shape, yeah. yes. I think it's lovely uh, just for presentation, but just the, something different. Oh, absolutely. Mm. But the most important thing that we have to tell viewers at home, if you're tempted to do this at home, that you must put the cream in at the very last minute because yes. the cream will make the pastry go soggy. Soft, soft, so that's, that's the, the, the trick here. So that's let's go in and let's see this final recipe. Oh, thank you. The base of the cannoli are a cup and a half of plain double O flour, which was sifted, with three tablespoons of caster sugar and 60 grams of butter rubbed into the flour until it resembles fine breadcrumbs. We add a beaten egg and, and one teaspoon of white wine and combine our mixture. Having combined the dough well, then you let the dough rest uh, for 60 minutes at room temperature in a bowl which you have brushed with a little oil so that the dough doesn't stick to the bottom and cover it with glad wrap. The traditional shape for cannoli are, are the ones that I'm holding here, like a tubular sh a shape. And they traditionally are in this bamboo material. However, tonight I have chosen to use the cone um, shape which I think is a little more elegant and just has a little more finesse. My mixture has been resting at room temperature for 60 minutes, so that should be ready now. So I'm going to dust my board and just work it slightly. Unlike the pasta dough, you don't overwork this pastry. You just, um, just work it slightly and very little working on the machine. Now, the dough is not made too thinly you, because it, when you fry it, it quickly burns if it's too thin. If it is too thick, you don't get the beautiful bubbles on your canola as a result. So therefore, the second um, thinnest setting, about one to one and a half mils in thickness, is the correct thickness for this dough. The less handling and the better the cannoli will be. I'm ready now to cut my dough into squares and wrap them around my cannoli stainless steel shells. I tend to use my kitchen scissors because I just feel as though I've got more control and it's a lot faster. We are now going to wrap the pastry square around the conical shape canola shell, making sure that the two ends meet and overlap. And in the overlapping, that is where you're going to be brushing your beaten egg in order for it to seal properly. I'm using a mixture of canola canola and vegetable oil. The oil needs to be really, really hot and a fine fry pan would be more advisable, a little deep so you don't, you can put enough oil in there and the oil doesn't splash. And you have to be really, really careful to not overburn the cannoli because it's a very, very quick process. But on the other hand, the, hot, the oil has to be very hot. Once the oil has drained off on the paper toweling, then you just pick up a small serviette because the cones would be hot. For this mixture, we need 500 grams of ricotta. Okay, I have my 500 grams of ricotta, which I'm going to add five tablespoons of caster sugar. Then I'm going to put in four tablespoons of limoncello a crema, or you could just put in normal limoncello. Next step is um, making my lemon zest with a nice fresh lemon. 
Now it's important to give this a good mix and bind it nice and smoothly, and then we shall fill our cannoli shells. You can either insert it into a piping bag, or I really prefer this cake decorator, and I will fill my cannoli shells, then I will top them with crushed pistachios, finely crushed, and dust them with ice and sugar, and they are ready to have with a nice glass of limoncello a crema. Enjoy. Well, Mr. Eddie Martin, thank you so much for allowing us to come here to the uh, club um, just to get a bit of a taste about what you do here and also, of course, uh, Frank's skill in the kitchen. You're welcome, Katarina. Now, tell me about you. Now, how long have you been a uh, president here for? Well, I've been president at, for now for six months. Uh, mm. Before that, I was on the committee for four years wow. before I took over, so yeah. Oh. Big job. I, I would say this yes. is a very big job. Any of these social clubs, because there's many facets to these clubs, um, aside that you've got to uh, keep the members happy. That's <laughs> that would one be thing, important. yes. That would be an important thing. But tell me exactly um, what you have here at the club, um, because it's not just about the food and wine, is it? No, it's not just about the food and wine. We have our members that come every Wednesday and Friday nights where they play bocce. Bocce for our people at yes. home. I guess we should tell our viewers that bocce, of course, is one of the oldest games in the world. I think something like 5,200 BC, do you know that? It, it's just quite amazing. And then the Romans brought it out to the world. Well, but yes. the great thing is that, of course, it was played mainly through northern Italy and also Slovenia, Belgium, Germany, all up that top region. But, of course, with the mass uh, immigration, um, the Italians brought it out to, the, to America and to Australia. And I guess it was one thing they could really hang their head on. And it was always about a friendly game with a bit of salami and a glass of um, un bicchiere di vino. That is true, that mm. is true. But unfortunately, it's a dying sport because the young people do not take, you know, do not participate in the game of bocce. So, you know, it's a shame to see it, that it the yeah. way it's going, but it'd be yeah. nice if the young people do get involved like they do with the lawn bowls. Thank Bacio, you. grazie. Alla prossima. Grazie, Caterina. Mm, no, grazie. Okay, and can I just say, as we sang for Lund, Mandy, Ma which that says that? goodbye. Mandy, Mandy, I like that.